Yes, I know. The Wi-Fi bug is back. I actually went ahead and changed the title of my previous video to Meta has finally fixed it to Meta has temporarily fixed it because it was fixed. Between the version 64 and 65, it worked perfectly. But since then, the fluctuating uh, speeds on MetaQuest 3's Wi-Fi have returned. But to be fair, again, as I've said before in previous videos, it's not nearly as bad as it was, but it's not perfect and we know it can be perfect and therefore it's kind of annoying, isn't it? Let me show you how bad it is. So here is the quest running. Uh, we want to watch the Wi-Fi here. Okay. There's my computer. It's connected with a cable into the router, which is beside this wall here. And it's right behind this wall. Uh, but still, as you can see, my transmit speed and link speed around 11 and 14. Right now, they're actually quite stable. Of course, the minute I start doing this, let's move back to my desk, you can see it jumps down to 846 on transmit speeds, but it's right there. I mean, it's literally four meters away from me, but of course, there's a wall between us, and that, of course, always has its drawbacks. Let's move closer to it. There we go. One meter from it, then we get full speed. Move back a couple of meters, starts fluctuating. So as you can see, it actually works. I mean, as long as you're one meter from the router, it still shows you 2,400. And if you don't have any walls or objects between you and the router, it has a pretty good signal at one meter's distance. So that technically means it's working as intended. It's just not as good as the Quest 2. The Quest 2 had a stable signal like through everything. It, it had a, a constant 1200 megabits per second signal. So this is me recording locally on the Quest. And uh, this is the game The Wander. I'm just going to walk around just so that you can see uh, some gameplay from it. And this looks like to be working quite well when you're just looking at a recording from it. Uh, but if you take a look at my megabits per second, you can see that it's fluctuating up and down like crazy. So especially it affects it when I turn around. You can see that it drops down to 864. That's because the sensor is in the front of the mask. And uh, you can still say that, yeah, this looks like it's it's working okay. And it is. It's working okay. I mean, compared to the the the, uh, the 56 or whatever it was, where it was unplayable, it's still playable. But as you can see, the, the megabit per second is going up and down. And you can also see my frame rate uh, in the FPS. It goes to 70 every 10 seconds. And that results in a little like a little pull, a jittery pull in the gameplay that you really can't see in the recording. And it's really nauseating and annoying. Uh, so if you want this to be perfectly stable, you need uh, also the negotiation rates to be stable. Because the reason it's actually doing that is because the, the megabits per second is going up and down, which means that Virtual Desktop or, or, uh, uh, or Steam Link can't really keep up with uh, how much information to send the headset. And therefore, you're getting like this little nudge every 10 seconds, which is super annoying. And you might say, well, yes, this is a standalone headset that can do wirelessly. It can't be perfect. Well, sure, it can't be perfect. But why could the Quest 2 do this perfectly? The Quest 2 was super stable at 1,200 uh, megabits per second. Why can't the third one be as stable? So, yes, as a lot of you have pointed out, uh, the Wi-Fi stability bug is sort of back. Uh, and I don't think it's going to go away. 
as I said, technically it is working as it intended. You do get full speeds as long as you're close enough to the router. It's just not as good as the Quest 2, unfortunately. Uh, and I think the reason it's not working as well now as it did from version 62 to 65 is uh, because Meta has power issues with uh, where to put the power in this headset. And they don't want to distribute all the power to the Wi-Fi, and I don't want this to like have half an hour of battery. So uh, I, I, I would guess, my guess is that's the reason it's back. And they've toned it down as far as they can, where it still works, but it's not perfect anymore. Which is annoying because we know it can be perfect. I wish there was like some feature we could turn on in the settings, like distribute all power to the Wi-Fi to use it as a wireless headset or something like that. Because we know it can do. We know it did this from 62 to 65, but it's just not doing it anymore. But of course, there are things we can do to make this work better. And the obvious thing is to move the router closer to your headset and then it should work uh, fine. Like get it like on your desk, uh, right beside the area where you're playing, that's fine. For me though, as you can see, I have a lot better office space right now. And I have generally just gone over to using the link cable again. Uh, I'm trying to put a setup here where I actually get the cable to stay above ground as much as possible. And that makes it uh, work a lot better. That's not a, a real answer for you guys, I know. Uh, or that's not a, a solution for you guys. So in the next video, I'm gonna try another router. Why not? I mean, it can't hurt, can it? This is a Wi-Fi 7 router from uh, TP-Link. Uh, and this, uh, I'm, I'm, I keep choosing TP-Link uh, to test because they're the cheaper consumer models that most people can actually afford that don't want to spend $400 on a gaming router. So you can buy this one for $200 instead. And uh, we're gonna unpack that and we're gonna do a little test of it uh, and uh, see how that works. And I'm gonna move my old router in here and use that as a wireless access point instead. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do that as well. Not in this video though, that's gonna be in the next video. So yes, I have heard you guys, I have read your comments. I know that this is not as perfect as it was after the fix. And it probably won't be as perfect again because well, unfortunately it's probably a hardware fault. Uh, it's, they've, they've made some poor choices when it comes to putting in the antenna or distributing the power or how much battery to use. So I don't think that Meta's gonna fix it because Meta wants to prioritize its uh, standalone features like its own software that's running on this headset because that's what sells the most. Most people don't use this as a wireless headset on a PC. And uh, so they're gonna prioritize that as much as they can, which is their prerogative, I guess. But it would be interesting for any of you guys if you have like a Pico or another wireless headset. Uh, how does that compare to this one when it comes to the wireless experience? But of course you can always just continue pressuring Meta to fix this and maybe they'll eventually find a solution or put in an option like I said. And the way to do that is to use the report a problem feature that you will find in the headset. I'll put a link on how to do that down in the description. So thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to like this video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to, and I'll talk to you later.